In this video, we're going to talk about layers and what's called the collision matrix. Now, you already have a good step to understanding layers because we worked with sorting layers and you saw how you can set the order of sprites and how they're layered on top of each other in our game. Layers work very similar to how sorting layers do, but they don't visually change or control how the sprites are displayed. That's the purpose of the sorting layers. To use an actual layer is so we can determine what objects are going to interact with other objects. So to create layers, if we select any object, I'm just going to select the player. And if we go up to the inspector here, we have a drop down for layer. And by default, they're going to be on the default layer. Just like with sorting layers, if we click this one, we can go to add layer. And it actually brings up the exact same window. So if we expand this one, we can see our sorting layers from before. And then below we have layers. Now Unity does create some by default, so we're always going to have these layers. And then we can add our own here. Now layers aren't something that you want to create a huge amount of. As you can see, we do have the option where we have 32 layers in total. So 0 to 31. So you don't need an abundant amount of layers but they're very helpful for common things. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna first create a player layer, then we're gonna create one for ground, and then I'm gonna create another one called obstacles. So just by doing that, I now have three different layers. Let's go select our player again. Now, if we go up to layer, we can click on the drop down and we see the new one. So let's set the player on the player layer. And let's go to our rock and let's set the rock on the obstacle layer. And now obstacles is just a term I like using for basically hazards in our game. So I'm not gonna use this for actual enemies. So if it's an enemy that moves around or does any kind of smart interaction, I'm gonna create a separate layer for those later. Obstacles is gonna be things like maybe if there's spikes on the ground, a boulder because all it's doing is rolling in one direction. It doesn't have any logic to it but that's entirely up to you how you structure your layers. And you're gonna see as we progress through the game, you have a lot of freedom there. That, that's something that as a game developer, you just kind of get your own little habits as you progress. So right now we set these layers. If we run the game, nothing has changed. So I move around, I can push this rock. To show a bit of a demonstration of how this layer system works, I'm gonna duplicate the rock so I just hit control D. I'm gonna move this one around. I'll put it say right here. And now if I run the game, you can see if I push the first rock, it's gonna push the second one because they collide with each other. And then the player can move off. He can hit the platforms. Let's go up to the edit menu and then project settings. And now, just like when we came in here for the input manager, we have another tab on the side. We have physics and physics 2D. Remember, the two systems always work separately, so we wanna to go to physics 2D. We have a lot of settings here we can change for our physics system. We don't wanna to touch or look at any of that. That's a lot more advanced, but you can customize it. We wanna look down here where it says layer collision matrix. So what this is used for is you can tell which layers can collide or interact with other layers. So you can see we, we just have a grid here and we have the layers on each side. So the way this works is if I look here, see this is the player layer and then all these checks. So if we look at a layer and then we look to the left to the other layer, these are the ones that collide with each other. So in this case here, this check is for the player colliding with the player. And what that would mean is if we had two player objects in our game, both on the same layer, would they hit each other? So let's do a quick demonstration here. I'm gonna look at the player right here. And if I look over, if I scroll up, this one's ground. And you can just mouse over and it's gonna show you both. So player slash ground. So let's uncheck that one. Now we don't even have to close this window. I'm just gonna move it to the side. Let's run the game. And nothing happened. And this is actually because I didn't assign the ground layer here yet. So these platforms are still on the default layer. So let's go actually to our prefabs folder. 
select our prefab. And right in the prefab, I'm going to assign the ground layer. Now you're going to get this window. It's going to ask if you want to do this for all the child objects as well. And we want to select yes, because we want everything part of this platform to be on the ground layer. And if you're not fully sure what that meant, let's quickly go back into our prefab. So what we did is we set the ground layer on this top object, the parent. And then when it asked us that question, when we selected yes, what it did is it set all of these to be on ground. If we would have selected no, it would have set the ground layer on the top parent object here, but none of these bottom ones. And for the most part right now, that wouldn't actually matter because the only thing that matters for physics is our collider and our collider is only on the top. But I just wanted to explain what that was and how that works. Okay, so now if we look at our platform, notice it's on the ground layer. Let's run our game. And our player falls right through the platform, but the rocks don't. And that's because we unchecked this one here. So if we check that again, let's try something different here. Let's make obstacles not collide with other obstacles. So if I uncheck that one, move this out of the way here and we run our game again, see what's going to happen here is our player can collide with the rock, but notice it rolls right through the other rock. So now this is going to determine how we want to set up our game later. So we could make something where we might want the boulders to collide with each other, but if they run into say another enemy or some spikes on the ground, we want them to roll through. That's where we would start setting up different layers for each of the types of objects we want to use. And this does vary a lot depending on the game and how you want to make it. So even if you look at some of the, the really popular big 2D platformers that have been out, different games handle different things. Sometimes enemies, like say in Super Mario Brothers, sometimes some of the turtles will bounce into each other and cause them to turn around and walk the other way. And then other enemies will walk right through each other and just keep going in the same direction. So it's really a preference of how you want to run your game. So for right now, I'm going to check this back. So everything collides with each other right now. And then we can modify that as we need to going forward now.